If I had a penny for every time someone asked me, what tariff do I go on with my cozy heat pump? I'd have a lot of pennies. Well, this video, I'm hopefully going to answer that question. What is the best tariff for you to go on with a cozy heat pump? Because you might not have a battery, you might not have solar, you might not have an electric car. This is gonna be the best guide I can give you to decide what to pick for your individual circumstances, including what are my personal circumstances? Plus, there might be something very special if you've got a cozy heat pump that the rest of the heat pump customers on Octopus Energy won't be seeing. Let's first talk about what tariff I'm on. I'm on Octopus Go Intelligent. Octopus Go Intelligent offers me 7p electric for charging up my electric car but I also have batteries and solar. Now, if you don't have batteries and solar, keep watching, we'll get around to you in a minute. But if you have batteries and solar and an EV, you can charge up your home storage battery during the Octopus Go Intelligent hours, which are 7p. So for between half 11 and half five in the morning, I can run the heat pump, warm the house up at 7p, but I can also charge my home storage battery. And if I plug the car in, I can sometimes be awarded with extra bonus hours at 7p for the car, but also the house so I can then run the heat pump or recharge the batteries during those extra 7p hours, meaning that my average cost per unit is very low. Now we'll get to my average cost per unit in a minute, but if you even if you haven't got solar, don't worry about it because in the winter, your battery is gonna be doing most of the heavy lifting when it comes to running your heat pump or running your home because solar energy in the winter is fairly low which means if you just went for a battery only system on go intelligent with an ev you can get some seriously low costs now this is just a quick reminder that if you haven't currently got an octopus heat pump or you're not an octopus energy customer and you have a heat pump then you can sign up to Octopus Energy at evnick.com forward slash energy. If you haven't got a heat pump and you're not an Octopus Energy customer, there's up to 150 pound up for grabs. 50 pound for signing up to Octopus Energy and 100 pound off a heat pump. Now, if you're already an Octopus customer, you can still have 100 pound off a heat pump. So there's a bit of money off your install there or joining Octopus if you're not already a customer. Now, in this video, we're gonna be talking about the on temperature. Now the on temperature for this video will be 19.5 uh, Celsius and the set back temperature. Now this is what we refer to as the off temperature because you never turn a heat pump off, you set it back. The set back temperature for me on this video will be two Celsius less than my on temperature. So 17.5 is my set back. Now this video is gonna be about averages because this is how you're gonna work out what the best tariff is for you. Now I'll show you how I got this average in a minute, but my average for the last 27 days at the time of writing the script was 10.62 pence per kilowatt hour. So most of my electricity is during the off peak rate or being supported by my battery, which was charged up during the off peak rate. So I'm shift load shifting a lot of my energy away from the peak times. Now, this is increased by doing a couple of tricks with the heat pump. So first of all, what I do is I set my cozy to run my hot water cylinder warming 4 a.m. till 5.30 a.m. This means that it's during the off-peak 7p rate and that's when I'm heating my water. That's the least efficient part of the heat pump is water heating, space heating is more efficient. So do it, always try and do the water heating during the cheapest rates you have on whatever energy tariff you're on because they're the least efficient and you can basically manipulate the tariff a little bit more. Now, the other thing I do is I have my heating set to turn off, turn on to my setback temperature at 21.45. So basically quarter to 10 at night, it goes into setback. Now the house doesn't drop off from 19 and a half degrees to 17 and a half degrees. It takes a while for the house to eventually cool down. So basically by the time I'm asleep, that's when the house is going colder. Um, and by then I'm wrapped nice and warm in my bed, so I don't really care. Um, but what will happen then is that later on at 23.15, so 15 minutes before Octopus Intelligence starts, my heating clicks back into the on temperature, which is 19.5 Celsius. And it's set to run like that until half nine in the morning, which means that my heating is done during the 7p rate mainly, especially if it's been like a warmish day, it, my house will retain that heat for the whole day and then 
cool down at night and then reheat again during that seven peak period. But what it also means is because my water schedule kicks in between this heating hours, if the water warms up quicker than it normally does, then it will go back to heating. And that long pipe run that I have has hot, hotter water in it for the hot water tank system than it would for the central heating system. It means I'm not wasting any of that heat from the hot water cycle. That's a really good way of sort of like taking advantage of that hot water cycle, running heating either side of it so the pipes are ready and also you're not wasting any of that heat going basically just lost around the circuit. Now the next tariff up to grab from Octopus Energy is the Octopus Cozy Tariff. Now the Cozy Tariff is a little bit different that it has several peaks, off peaks and uh, day rates. So it's got a couple of kind of like different balances to the way the energy works. So essentially you have a 13p, what they call the cozy rate. So the cozy rate is split throughout the day. It's 4 a.m. till 7 a.m., 1 p.m. till 4 p.m. and then finally 10 p.m. till midnight. You get that for 13p. So basically if you're a battery customer, you'd set the battery to charge up during all these cozy rates. You'd set the cozy to run through the cozy rates or basically through the entire day because you've got your battery covering that. The battery, even a five kilowatt hour battery should say fully charged all the way through all the non-cozy periods and run the heat pump. Unless you've got a really old house, which we'll get to the one point that you don't want to run the, co uh, the cozy heat pump or uh, any electricity you're trying to avoid the peak area, which is four till seven because four till seven, you'll pay a huge subsidy out for your electricity during that time because Octopus don't want you to use energy at that time. They, they charge 40p a kilowatt, so try and avoid that time. Now, there's a couple of tricks you can do with a Cozy if you haven't got a battery. First of all, try and set your hot water heating to closest to the time you're having a shower. So if you have a shower in the morning at 7 a.m., set it for the set your hot water schedule for 4 a.m. to 5 a.m., and then it's nice and hot for your shower, and you're not losing any heat through the tank throughout the day. So basically, try and set that hot water schedule as close to the time you're actually going to use the shower as possible and then some other tricks you can do is if you haven't got a battery set your heating before the 4 p.m slot so basically uh, the, the the you want to avoid the four four till seven so before the four till seven slot set the heating to be maybe one celsius higher than you would normally so instead of 19 and a half set it for 20.5 try and get the fabric of the building a little bit warmer take you through that four to seven slot. Now, some homes may be really well insulated and the four to seven slot loses pretty much no, you know, no heat based out of the building at all. But it isn't always nice to just crank that up maybe half a degree, one degree, just to warm the fabric up to carry it through that four to seven slot. Now, what I do for the four and seven slot is set the setback temperature instead of two Celsius down, I set it for three Celsius down just to make sure that, that cozy doesn't turn on during that period. Now. Every home's different. Some homes won't even lose two, two Celsius over that period. Some definitely will lose two Celsius over that period. You'll know what your house is like once you've got a heat pump and you'll start to work out what the best way of doing it is. Now, some EV owners could benefit from also being on cozy instead of intelligent if they haven't got a battery. And to work that out, we need to know what your averages are. And to work your averages out, we have a couple of tricks. Now I use an app called Octopus Watch. Octopus Watch allows me to see what the average rate I'm getting on uh, Octopus at the moment. Now, it will struggle with intelligent. They're all gonna struggle with intelligent because they don't know if you've been allocated extra hours. They just assume uh, that you're only getting the set hours. So they're all gonna struggle with this. But if you are currently Octopus Go Intelligent and you see your average is below 12p, it's going to be cheaper than you going on Cozy. You don't need to switch. If it's around 17p, you're probably going to be better on Cozy than you are on Go Intelligent with your heat pump. But until you've got your heat pump and using Go Intelligent, you're not really gonna be able to work these, these averages out. Now there's another app um, called Octopus Compare, and that actually allows you to set different tariffs in Octopus and compare the bill over a month, a day, and see which one's the cheapest or most expensive. Now on mine, it clearly tells me that Octopus Cozy would be far more expensive than Octopus Intelligent. And the advantage of Octopus is, no matter which of these tariffs you pick, there's no exit fees with Octopus. You can switch to another tariff with no penalties. Now there is a condition written in their terms and conditions that you can't switch between smart tariffs like this more than once every six months. However, they will 
slightly bend the rules for most customers that ask. It's to put off, it's to stop customers from going on Octopus Agile, then switching to Octopus Flux, then switching to Octopus Cozy, just to basically avoid the Agile rates and just continue switching, basically trying to gamify the Octopus tariff. So that's why there's a condition there of six months, but if you switch to a tariff, very quickly realize you made a mistake, and you ask Octopus nicely, as long as you're not making a habit of doing it frequently, they will occasionally bend the rules. Just ask, you know, say, I made a mistake. I, you know, I've got the heat pump. I was a bit confused by the tariff. I'd like to go back to my original tariff. Then they're not going to hold you prisoner. The Octopus are a fantastic company when it comes to customer service. And as long as they appreciate you're not doing it deliberately to gamify the system, it'll be completely fine. Now, we're going to get to Agile in a bit. Now, look, I don't hate Agile. It's just for cozy customers because the cozy can't decide when it turns on and off. I just think it'll be a bit of a faff for you at the moment, but I will probably change my opinion on that in the future. However, Octopus are probably going to render this entire video useless because they've already hinted there's going to be a cozy intelligent tariff. Cozy intelligent tariff will look something like running the heat pump. Whenever it runs, they will give it you at 12p. Now I'll get back to why it needs 12p, but they'll also let you keep Octopus Go intelligent for the car, I believe, at the same time. All my screens have just turned off, by the way, so I've lost my script. But what I think will happen is they need to give it a low rate, 12p, 14p to run the heat pump. And the reason they need to give it a low rate is because they're going to modulate when your heat pump runs, turns off, turns on. You'll just ask for 20 Celsius, they will maintain your house temperature but they're going to modulate your heat pump. Now, because they're going to modulate your heat pump, they're going to ruin the COP rate, the COP rate. But if they're giving you reduced electricity at 12p, if the COP rate's two, it's still less than gas. And this is the whole point. They're going to be able to modulate that thing, but sometimes they might modulate it and you're getting a really good COP, maybe three and a half, four COP, but still paying 12p. And this is the advantage of Octopus. They're going to be able to control and modulate that heat pump depending on what they want. This is why I got an Octopus Cozy over a Daikin. I knew that Octopus would do clever stuff with their heat pump. If you've got a Daikin heat pump, you can't expect Octopus to modulate it because Daikin doesn't give them that level of control inside it. It's why Octopus built the Cozy. They wanted the level of control for the, adapting it to their tariff. So if you're thinking of getting a heat pump, you can go to evnick.com forward slash energy. There's a code there to get £100 off the Daikin or the Octopus Cozy, whichever one you decide on. I personally recommend that you go for a Cozy. I love my Cozy and I know it's going to get a lot, lot smarter over the years. Now, one thing to remember is that if you want to see what the process is like getting a cozy, what it was like getting installed, the telephone, the installation, all this stuff, I've created a huge detailed playlist here that I recommend you go and watch. But if you want to run your heat pump off batteries, check out these five batteries that me and Heat Pump went through, the pluses, the minuses, and all the good, good and bad about them. I really fully recommend that and Heatable. Go and check that video out, and I'll see you again soon.